Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this Infinity Scarf. This is a lightweight uh, scarf. This is a smart casual as far as a uh, design and you're going to see that it looks really quite luxurious. Now the yarn that is suggested is actually been out of service for quite some time. It's Red Heart Stardust. You may have it in your collection. So I'm gonna be substituting with Peyton's Croy Socks and I know what you're thinking. Why would you use sock yarn for this? why wouldn't you honestly. A sock yarn has a, the nylon to it. Very very long lasting and it actually feels and looks amazing in stitch definition. So in order to do this we're gonna be using a four millimeter size G crochet hook and then for the uh, later on it'll be a size K uh, six and a half millimeter as well. So I'm going to be demonstrating the two different uh, sections for you. We have the shell section and the mesh section and I'm gonna be using this beautiful yarn and this one uh, transitions and you'll see that transitioning through today's tutorial as well. So I have not done advanced prep work on this so I'm just gonna uh, wing it and see how we do it and let's begin and start right now. So let's begin and this is an intermediate level. So I'm gonna assume that you know some things and I'm gonna start off with the slip knot on the hook and we're going to chain 42. So I don't know what the change is for changing sizes but it is 42. So we're just gonna keep to that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go all the way to 42. See me back here in just a moment. So now that I've gone all the way across I'm gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one, two, three, and four and I'm gonna turn it around and get the back hump of that chain and I'm going to double crochet. So staying on the back hump as you're working all the way across in your chain I want you to double crochet all the way back and so get the next back hump and etc. So go all the way across your chain and double crochet and meet me back here in just a moment. This is row number officially one. So I've now just come to the end of number one and I'm gonna turn my work and do row number two. We're gonna get ourselves set up so that we can start doing that fun um, shell section soon. So let's begin row number two. So let's begin. We're going to chain one and we're only gonna half double crochet in the same one as the very beginning. Okay and now we're going to skip the next four stitches. So one, two, three, four. So we're gonna skip those, go to the fifth over and we're going to do nine trebles in the next one. So remember to wrap the hook twice when you go to do that and we're gonna do nine. So I will count quietly in my head and I'll get to nine. So this is starting with number one. This is the ninth one now and now we're going to skip a number of stitches. So we've got nine in and it says to skip the next four. So starting in the very next one. So one, let me just make sure I am where I am. So one, two, three. So one, two, three, four and then go and do a half double crochet in the fifth one away. And then what we want to do is we keep repeating that over and over. So you're gonna skip the next four. So one, two, three, four and in the fifth one you'll put nine trebles and then after that you'll skip four and then put have a double crochet in the next and you'll keep repeating that across. This is row number two and I'll see you at the end of this row. When you get to the end of number two it says only to skip a certain amount of stitches. We'll be skipping only um, uh, three in the end. So one, two, three and then you're gonna half double crochet in the very last one. So if you're thinking it's out of balance, technically it is but just go with it and we'll make the best of it right. So this is row number two and you will have four groups of nine trebles. Let's begin row number three which is the start of the repeat. So rows three through six is going to be a repeat pattern. So we're gonna start now row number three. So when you have to refer back this is where you're gonna go. You're going to start off with chaining a five. So one, two, three, four and five. This will count as one treble and a chain one space and I want you to treble once again into the same one where that came out of and that will be your uh, your edge. So the edging is slightly different on the amount of um, chains in between these trebles. 
Now to jump over this next chain, uh, or sorry, this next nine trebles here, you're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and immediately come into the half double crochet that separates those out and begin to treble first. And then you're going to chain three. So one, two, three, and treble once again. And that will get you over top of that shell. And then do it again. So chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then coming into the next one here, treble. So it's the next half double crochet. And then chain three. And treble once again. So I want you to do that all the way across. I'll see you on the very last stitch where we'll just confirm that you know what you're doing. And I'll see you at the end of row number three. Then coming up all the way to the end. So I've just chained my five. So I'm gonna start with my last treble going into there. It's the last stitch here. But you're not done. You're gonna chain up one and then treble once again. So there's only a chain one that separates those two trebles when it comes to the edge. And then you turn your work and you'll see this is what it should look like. Let's begin row number four. Let's begin number four. We're gonna have some fun with this chain work and with this here. So we're not quite done with this row here. See how they're separated? They won't be after we're done row number four. So we're going to chain four which will count as your first treble. And in the same space that we have right here is that we are going to put it in four trebles into that space. So I'll count quietly. So just go right into the space. So there's a total of four of those. Okay, so with the chaining of four plus those four, that gives you a look of five right in the edge. So now we're gonna half double crochet into the fifth one that is here in the nine. So we'll just count it over. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's where we wanna go. So when we go to double half double crochet, we wanna wrap. We wanna slide in there, but allow that chain to stay on top of the hook so it gets stuck up underneath and you're going to half double crochet. And so that will capture that chain with that stitch. Do you see that? And now you're gonna come to this chain three space over here and you were going to apply nine trebles. So just starting and I'll count quietly. So just come right in there and do the first one and then do the rest of the eight. So there's a total of nine. So I have a total of nine in here. So I'm gonna half double crochet. It's gonna be in the fifth one. So one, two, three, four, and five. And go in and trap that other chain space right there, right on top of it. So it gets stuck up underneath and you're gonna do that all the way across. So then just reach over, put in your nine, put in your half double crochet and secure it. I And keep doing that across and I'll see you at the end of this row. So as I get across number four, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I would do if it were me if you weren't watching me. So it tells you to put in five into this last chain one space. I would not do that if I were you. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna only put in four. So you can do it if you want to, but I'm only gonna put in four and I'll explain why I'm doing that in a second. You still need five, but only put four in there for sure. And then what I would do is in the fifth one, the fifth one that you need, I would put into the turning chain itself. And that'll hold that so that it doesn't collapse on itself. And maybe if it was a, a treble it would even be better, right? So just to make sure you treble into that turning chain itself. And that'll hold it so that it'll hold the edging beautifully. Sometimes things can slide and therefore it looks out of balance. And the way that we started is that we came out of the turning chain here and then put four in the space. So I think we should do the same here and then it'll keep its line straight up. Let's turn our work and begin row number five. Let's begin row number five. Chain up only one and in the first one you're coming out of I want you to half double crochet. 
and then I want you to chain two. So one and two and now I want you to come into the half double crochet that's separating those trebles out and you were going to put in, remember the spacing that we did here? You see that? We're gonna do the same here. So we're gonna apply then um, a treble, chain three and a treble all within that half double crochet that's next that comes up. So there's the treble, chain three and treble again. And do you remember how many that you had to chain when you went over? Do you remember? You had to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you reach over to the next half double crochet and then treble, chain three and treble. And you're gonna do that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row. This is row number five. So once you come to the very end and you have that last treble, chain three, treble, chain only two and then half double crochet into the top of the turning chain. And that will complete off row number five. And so you're gonna turn your work and do row number six. You see how lovely that looks? Let's begin row number six next. So the final of the repeat then row number six, you're just gonna chain up one and you were going to apply a half double crochet in the first stitch. So just slam it in there, half double crochet. And now you're going to play with those trebles like you did before. So the trebles, there's gonna be a total of nine in the next chain three space. So I'll count the first nine quietly. So this is one, So this is the ninth one and when I jump over I'm gonna be halfway over top so it's gonna be the fifth one. So one, two, three, four, five. So you're gonna go in there and half double crochet and keeping that chain five on top so it gets stuck up underneath and you're half double crocheting it so it compacts it all together. Then you reach over, put in your nine and then half double crochet up over top the next section and do that all the way across. So we've kinda covered this before and let's see you at the end of row number six. So remember there's nine that make up that shell. So I'm coming all the way across so I have my nine in here. So once you have that last nine in there you're just gonna half double crochet in the end and that concludes off row number six. So I'll try that again and let's turn our work and review because this is now the end of a repeat and you get to repeat this over and over and it looks really lovely at this moment and let's go back to the pattern and let's repeat. I'll do the rest of the repeat off camera and uh, you can put me on pause at that moment and then we'll carry on in this project. So now we've just completed up to row number six. So now for rows number seven through eighteen we have to repeat rows number three through six three more times. So what I would do and I would do three, four, five and six, three, four, five, six and then three, four, five and six. Check it off as you go. Then I need you to repeat row number three. So write down the number three. So you repeat that and that's where I'm going to pick you up. So don't fasten off. It will begin row number 20 as we do that and then we're going to then work our way through that and then start on the mesh section next which will be after that. So repeat three through six three more times and then repeat row number three and meet me back here in just a moment. So put me on pause now. So now I've just finished up to row number 19. So I've done three to six three times and then I just finished on number three. So this is what it should look like and we're now going to move on to row number 20. So let's take 20 nice and slow and our goal is to get ourselves back to 40 stitches across. So as we begin I'm just gonna be reading slowly here off the camera. So we'll just chain three to begin. That's your first double crochet. And in your chain one space right there you were just going to apply one double crochet. Now we're gonna do three double crochets in this chain five space to start and then we'll explain more. So just three double crochets first. So one, two and three. And we're gonna come into this one down here. We're gonna go to the fifth one like we did and we're gonna double crochet and when we do the double crochet we're gonna go right into the the fifth one and right up and keep that chain on top and double crochet. Then that same chain we want to put three double crochets again. So one, two and three. 
and now we're gonna jump over to this space. So we're gonna apply three in there. So one, two, and three. And then we're gonna do the next chain five space. So I'll show you one more time. So you're gonna do the first three. So one, two, and three. And now the next one is gonna be the fifth one. And you're gonna double crochet right o over top of that. Keep that chain in. And then in that same chain, three more double crochet. And then jump into that chain three space and put in three and etc. So please do this all the way across. I'll see you at the end of this row. This is row number 20. So as I'm coming across I'm gonna give you an alternative. So I'm just doing the that chain five there and just putting the second half of the three double crochets in. So like it stated way down here and I gave you an exception. It says to put two into the final chain one space there and that's it. I wouldn't do that. I would do one into the space and then one into the turning chain itself and that'll stabilize your edge. And again that's your call if you would like to do that. So now we should have 40 stitches and it should lay flat for you just like mine does and we're going to move on to the mess section next. So my work is turned and we're now going to do row number 21. So we're going to chain three. So one, two, three and we're gonna skip the first double crochet which is the one that is coming out of and we're going to double crochet in the next. Okay, sorry I'm gonna double crochet the next. And then it states to chain one, skip the next double crochet and then double crochet in the next. Just like that and we're gonna repeat that across. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. And let's do that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row. This is row number 21. So I'm coming all the way across just chaining one, skipping the second last one and going into the turning chain and turn your work and let's begin row number 22. Number 22 to 25. Here we go. Four rows of this. You're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and double crochet in the first space and then you're gonna start that skipping of the mesh. So chaining one and go into the next chain one space and chain one and go into the next chain one space after this and you're gonna do this all the way across. So this is row number 22, 23, 24 and 25. I'll see you at the end of that section and we'll meet you back at the end of this row just to verify you can turn properly and then I'll leave the rest of this section for you and we'll be back in then row number 26 to start again. So I'm coming up to the end of number 22. The, all of them are gonna be finishing the same way. I'm in the last mesh space, chain one, skip over the next one and go right into the turning chain for the final. So then you'll turn it and then you'll begin the next row. In this case it would be row number 23. So go all the way to 25 for me and meet me back here in just a moment. Okay, so now I've just finished up to row number 25. Now 26, let's begin. We're going to chain three. That's your first double crochet and then in each chain uh, two space or chain one space we are going to apply two double crochets in each. So one and two and then just jump to the next space and do the same thing and do this all the way across and I'll see at the end of this row just to verify you're finishing right. So I'll see at the end of this row. This is row number 26. At the end of row number 26 you're just coming right into the last space here and there's two stitches left. So just go into the very last turning chain and apply one double crochet. So now we're gonna turn our work and do rows number 27 and 28. We've already done number 27 which is the same as number 21. Just chain up three. There's your first double and then you're going to double crochet in the next and then you're going to begin the skip. So chain one, skip the next, double crochet in the next. Just chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. This is row number 27. At the end of number 27 just chain one, skip the second last one and go right into the turning chain, double crochet. Turn your work and let's do row number 28 which is the same as number 22. So let's begin number 28, just chain up three, double crochet in the next space and then chain one, skip to the next space and double crochet there and chain one and skip to the next space and maybe on the other side of this in just a moment. This is number 28. Coming up to the end of number 28 just chain up one, skip the second last one and go right to the chain, turning chain and that ends that story. So we're going to now begin into row number 29 
and then continue up and I actually have demonstrated everything I need to for this particular one except for the edging and let's uh, just go through this pattern and then you can reverse back to get all the sections that you need at this moment. So in this pattern I have left you now at row number 29 which is the same as number 26. Then you're gonna do row number 30 which is the same as number 21. Then you're going to do rows number 31 through 34 which is rows number 22 to 25. And then you're going to do row number 35 which is the same as row number 26. So you're going to do that. Once you have that whole sequence done this is where the major repeat starts for the whole thing. So rows number 36 to 103 is repeating rows number 2 through 35 twice. And then rows number 104 to 136 is repeating rows number 2 through 34. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that in your capable hands to be able to get that done and then eventually you can either sew or slip stitch along the, the edge of the ring which I'll demonstrate that in just a second. So let's just say that we have all of our repeating done and we it'll be obviously much bigger than this but you can just either slip stitch or you can sew the remaining to form the ring. So if you want an infinity then what you have to do, let me just back you out so you can see it. So if you want like an infinity in the sense of a Mobius then what you can do instead of laying it flat like this you can turn this and so it'll have a permanent twist in it. So it's just a half, considered a half twist and so when you wear it it will be having that twist. If you don't want that then just simply lay it flat on top of each other and you are going to slip stitch matching the stitches from one side to another. So just starting in the very first section over here and slip stitch and I'm gonna demonstrate this so that I can show you how to do the edging and once you have the first one done just go to the next one and the next and slip stitch. Now slip stitching can be relatively tight so just be relaxed with your slip stitching so that it doesn't buckle on you. You've done so much work as it is you don't want that to happen. So pull up a little bit of slack and then you're good to go. So slip stitch all the way across then fasten off and I'll show you how to weave in the ends and that will get you started then for the next section which will be the ruffle if you would like to apply that to your, your um, cowl as well. Once you've slipped all the way across I'm just going to finish off and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use a tapestry needle to hide this in. I would assume as this level that you may know, know that but you know a lot of people message every day saying you know they wish they not have their tails fall out. So the secret to doing it is throwing it through a tapestry needle. Don't use your hook to weave it in and just glide it up underneath the stitch work right inside the same coloring and if you go once and just have it taut, don't change the shape, a slightly different path for number two and then finally you go a third time like that and that should never fall out on you. So you'll wanna deal with your loose ends that you have with this. You would have uh, had to change your balls a few times in this because of the length. Myself because it's just a sample and you'll wanna take your starting one as well and do the same thing. And so we're gonna move on to the ruffle next which is the round. So you could determine if you love it the way it is or if you just wanna go up another level and add some ruffling around the, the edging and I will demonstrate that in just a moment. So with the right side facing you, so I'm actually looking at the wrong side. How can I tell? See the shells? See how they kind of wanna go away from me? That means that it's the wrong side. So if you flip it and go like this, you'll see the shells have a little bit of a, see? They're kind of concave that way. So this is the right side of the project. So the shells will always end up on the same side no matter if you repeated the pattern and the mesh is gonna be equal on both sides. So we wanna start with that and then I'm going to begin at the seam line and then I'm gonna go rotate around. So yours will obviously be, be much bigger and with the right side facing we're gonna use the large hook size. So in this case it'll be a six and a half millimeter a size K. For tutorial reasons I'm just gonna move up to a six millimeter size J because that's here what's on the table. Let's uh, begin to do rough around number one. So let's begin the ruffle round number one. So all we just need to do is that we just need to equally space single crochets all the way around. So just starting in the very first one and just pull it through to slip it and chain one and you're just gonna equally space it. So don't worry about counting it. You don't need to just make it look good. So in a space like that I would go right in the space. So single and then I'd go in the next 
section here. So try to stay within the stitch work itself. It, like try not to pull too many um, gaping spaces and you're gonna go all the way around equally spacing single crochet. Now I've been single crocheting for quite, well I've been crocheting a long time. So I have that sense of like where I need to go next. If you don't that's okay. Yeah, if you have to pull out there's nobody watching you so don't worry about it. So I should be able to lay this thing down and it should not be buckling. So if it's ruffling like this it means that you're adding too many and if, sorry, if it's pulling like this it means you're adding uh, you're, you're going too quickly you need to add more and if it's starting to really ruffle out like feathers and stuff then it means that you're going too slow and you just gotta just jump ahead in more space as you work forward. So continue to do this all the way around equally space and you'll wanna do both sides the same way but let's just concentrate on one side first and then you can turn it over and repeat what you need to do for the other side. When you get all the way back around what I want you to do is that it uh, just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So when you lay this down there should not be any like really weird way of it. It shouldn't be ruffling, it shouldn't be buckling, should be laying flat just like you see it. Let's begin round number two In round number two is the final round and we'll begin to do that next. So let's begin the final round. We're gonna create a ruffle so it will actually ruffle out this time. So we're gonna chain up four which will count as a double crochet and a chain one and in the same one I want you to double crochet. Now before moving on I need you to chain one and in the next stitch I need you to double crochet, chain one, one double crochet and then chain one to move on. So coming to the next stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then chain one to move on and go into the next one and do the same thing. I want you to do that all the way around if you'd like to complete this for this particular concept and I'll see you at the end of this round. Now for full disclosure I didn't go all the way around I just stopped just because this is a tutorial and I haven't made the full size. So eventually I'm gonna come around and I'm just going to go right into my last one. So you're doing your double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then chain one after that and then just go to the third chain up from the very beginning and then that's where you're gonna end your story. Now I've already showed you how to weave in your ends using a tapestry needle so you can do that and apply that now and it just has a little bit of a different look. So this thing should be so long that it can wrap around your neck very kind of loosely uh, twice if you would like to do that and uh, it has a really beautiful um, texturing and also the stitch work is amazing and with the, the Croy sock F, uh, Socks FX it looks really amazing as well. So hopefully the colors are coming out clearly on camera because it really is a beautiful looking yarn and it will last forever and because it's sock yarn look you get a beautiful stretch as well. So that's it for now. Have a great day and we hope to see you again right here in the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspiration.com. Here come the hands. Oops. There you go. Bye bye.